this has usually got tricks on it, but um, I've just landed them all. I'm just kidding. I'll wake up six, seven, the night before, try and write a list for the day. Mellow stuff like wake up at 7.30, drink a litre of water, coffee. I try not to look at my phone in the first 30 minutes of the day. Waking up and seeing that the first thing in the morning makes me feel a bit like, all right, well, let's get up and do stuff instead of being like, oh, what am I up to today? So, you know, it's nothing big. You know, the stuff on there isn't hard. It's just gives me a bit of sense of, all right, let's get the day going. And I'll just take, it feels nice to tick something off by the end of the day. And it's Saturday today, so I'm going to get a takeaway for dinner. And all that sort of, that sort of stuff just, I don't know, has become more and more important to me in the past couple of years, being like 18 to 21. Um, the idea of routine doesn't really come into my head. And then I think it was 21, maybe 22, was I able to live off skating. You almost live this life of Riley. You know, obviously you want to be skating and being productive and stuff, but you can go to the pub five nights a week for like a month and kind of get away with it. And then, you know, as long as you're not like, blowing it all the time, it's kind of fine. So I've kind of ran like very little routine in my life for a long time. A little bit after the time Ben had died, um, obviously that was such a shocking experience for everyone to go, to go through and not really having the tools to understand why, why I was feeling how I was feeling. Obviously, it was heightened by, you know, drinking quite a lot. I kind of just got a bit fed up with it. And COVID hit, you just had so much more time on your hands, like less time to distract. Um, so it was in that time where I'd sort of be like, all right, well, if I wake up at eight and go skating early for like three hours, and then get back, make food, and then go on like a 20 mile bike ride. And I was like, wow, that actually feels really good. And sort of, you know, cooking at home every night. So it was just like, through trial and error, and going, and speaking about it in therapy as well was a big like, kind of like an eye opener. Sort of like, well, I'm doing a lot of the stuff that I do to distract myself you know, from whatever's going on in my brain, and then practicing making a routine more and more, and like, just made such a big difference. Just knowing that, like, this is what is most beneficial for me. Since doing that, I've started to notice, like, if I don't have any structure in the morning, I just become so lazy within the day. So it's like little things like that, which will just set me up for a better, better, more productive day. Um, but then, once I get all the morning crap out of the way. Most of the time go skating, sometimes just go to the skate park or South Bank. But because I've got a project I'm working on at the moment, sort of wake up, be like, what don't I want to try today? And usually go for the thing I want to try the least, because get it out, I'm trying to get it out of the way. but. So I did the suicide first aid training with the Ben Ramos Foundation. It was pretty simple. I just sat at this, I sat exactly here one evening um, and it was a Zoom call with eight other skaters. But you know, straight away it was super, like, thanks so much for being here, super inclusive and calming. And, um, and it was nice just to be able to do it, you know, on your laptop sat at home. It's not a lot of time out of your day um, to learn something that's like, it's going to be super beneficial for the rest of your life and hopefully those tools don't need to be used but in the in the case of which they do you already have them in your you know you already have them in your back pocket unfortunately for me in the past sort of four years suicide has been it's been in the room for a long time firstly with Ben um, sadly and then with other friends and you know there was parts in there which I thought was super helpful there was a lot of stuff I didn't know we discussed it afterwards it was all super insightful educational it's not a pleasant subject but it's really good to learn about it because majority of the time it's going to affect someone somewhere down the line one of the things I took away the most from 
the training courses, for me personally, was language. Because um, sadly, I've been in the situation where someone's spoken about it or, you know, it's, it's been attempted or, you know, it made me think back and be like, well, if I had worded it like this or gone into it with this sort of calmness or environment, um, I think it would have more of an impact or just learning how to listen. Because I think as, as people, we, everyone in a uncomfortable situations wants a solution straight away. And for a lot of things, uh, the solution isn't straight away. So that's something I took away. What you learn in there can make a massive difference to, to someone who's either close to you. I think having those tools to approach it is super important. If you have the time to do it, I would 100% recommend doing it. Okay, and I guess my next question is, have you ever set up a stable before? <laughs> <laughs>